Hello and welcome to the Hertfordshire Festival of Music. I'm James Francis Brown, the Artistic Director of the Festival, and I'll be introducing you to some of the very special performers who are playing for us in June 2023. As part of the choral coronation celebration taking place at All Saints Church, Hartford, at 6 o'clock in the evening on Saturday the 10th of June, the organist William Whitehead will be performing alongside Hartford Chamber Choir and their musical director, Manvin Daratan. I asked William about the organ works he chose for this performance and about his wider sense of care for the reputation of an instrument that has truly withstood the test of time. William, very good to see you here in your splendid garden here in Hatfield. Very good and, to see you too. Uh, it's, uh, and we're coming quite close now to our performance uh, at the Hertfordshire Festival of Music, Saturday the 10th. Um, and you're a very busy man at the moment, aren't you? Uh, Travelling around, uh, visiting lots of organs here and there uh, throughout Europe, mm. largely because uh, you're shepherding your magnum opus project, the Orga Buschlein project which we had, we were lucky enough to hear some representations of those a few years ago at the festival. Yes, how's, it all, how's it all going with the Orga Buschlein? It's um, all going it? well, <laughs> and it's like the gospel spreading across the world. So, um, the organist at the Katharinen Church in Hamburg has got enthused by it, and it's really off his own bat. That he's decided to do this and he's putting on a complete performance um, just after um, the concert that I'm playing in in the in the festival um, and so there we are we're doing so it's, um, it spreads <coughs> yeah I mean, I mean we, we have rather um, jumped the gun here it's, it's a huge project can mm. you give us a brief uh, outline to what, mm. what it Entails. So the Orgel Buchlein project is something which I started, goodness me, 18 years ago. Was it really that long? Yes. It really was. These things are <laughs> big <laughs> trajectories, aren't they? They are. Um, so it's it's aiming to complete what Bach left incomplete, his Orgel Buchlein, his little organ book. Um, the manuscript is more incomplete than complete. But Bach did leave us with a clue about what he was going to write. So I've commissioned um, several hundred composers now, yourself included, yes. um, to write something on one of the given but missing chorales. So, um, and indeed, it's a porridge pot that keeps giving because for this German um, performance, there are some new pieces. So I love the idea that it's an ever expanding project. Yes, and you all have noticed. I would imagine, do you still notice uh, temperamental differences? Uh, you've got composers from all over the world contributing. All over Europe. Uh, it's, it's it's a, a, it's a most of Europe. Most of Europe, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, do you still, would you say that sounds like a, a French composer <laughs> or a German composer? Yes. You know, is there still this sort of sense of flavour oh, in their music that you can detect? That's a really interesting question. Yes, sometimes, yes, of course, some composers are truly internationalist in their outlook but it's interesting you say France because I think some of the French composers partly because the organs in France have a very particular flavour um, they do sound French yes. um, and indeed one might say that some of the English or British composers I've commissioned sound quite British um, and I was quite keen to encourage that they, there's one contribution from a Hungarian composer and I sort of cautiously said was there any chance of giving it a Hungarian flavour? And he loved the idea, so that very much sounds like a Hungarian. Would that be a rhythmic, vocal rhythmic, based on the language? Uh, it's it the, mo the modal system he's chosen. Um, I'm can't, I ought to have a conversation with him and find mm. out exactly what it is, but it does sound in a very Hungarian modality. Yeah. I mean, you relate that immediately to the sounds of the organs in, in different countries, the tradition mm. that, 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 that these organs have been built to partly to sustain, I mm. think, mm. Um, still having that sense of a colour, uh, mm. to, you know, and uh, the registration, you know, pulling out the stops that you desire for that particular piece, mm. you must find that you come to an organ that has a very different set of mm parameters and possibilities oh yeah is that and quite is that quite difficult to well, not difficult but it's, it's, it must be quite a challenge to absorb it can be but it's also one of the 
joys about being an organist that I think if you're not prepared to sort of explore the instruments you have in front of you, then you're probably in the wrong job. But yeah. it's, um, yeah, I mean, unlike a pianist who, you know, they're going to, within fairly limited parameters, know what what they've got in front of them. It's um, it's a slightly more uh, more of an adventure with every different organ. Yeah, I mean, what do you think when you're preparing to to, to visit a new organ, say in Germany? Do you have a mental checklist to say uh, it, it will probably have these qualities? So I'm thinking <laughs> I'm going to pull out this stop. Uh, yes. You, know, you prepare even before you've seen the instrument. With yes, some indeed. Sense. I mean, the good old internet is a great help, and I would uh, always want to know what sort of stops an, an organ has and what sort of aesthetic it's it's representing. Um, but yes, I think when you get a bit of experience under your belt, you begin to you think, ah, oh, it'll do that well. Probably won't attempt to do that, and you 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 can tailor things prior to the day somewhat well the program you're playing the pieces you're playing uh, on saturday are very much from the british uh, mm. tradition um mm. and how would you define the sound the quality can you define the quality of a british organ uh -huh. yes one... i think so and the one the wonderful one we have um, in hartford is a, a very british sound and a very british design um, its guts are Willis, one of the Rolls-Royce organ builders of the 19th century. Um, so it's got all his characteristics, which means it's got a sort of richness. So the eight foot tone, the, the main tone of the organ is particularly sort of sumptuous, if you like, um, and really quite bright at the same time. It will have lots of colorful stops. Um, quite, uh, it's, it's at the period in Victorian Britain where they were rediscovering Bach so yes. these organs that we now wouldn't particularly choose to play our Bach on them that was their first steps towards rediscovering Bach and the, and the right organ to, to play his music on. William you're clearly very passionate about the instrument the organ in itself and wanting to uh, maintain its traditions mm. um, whilst giving it some a new quality for every uh, every generation. Uh, do you feel it is an instrument that's in need of, or has always been in need of a spe special pleading? Um, um, yes, I mean, it, it's curious because it's a sort of hybrid instrument, isn't it? I mean, it does a job for the church uh, and out of that tradition and then moving into a sort of concert halls and town halls and all that, it's become a slightly different thing. Um, and um, I mean, I love both sides of it, but I, yeah, I'm particularly interested in the art music, if you want to call it that, yeah. the, you know, the, from Bach or even earlier than Bach, but the, the amazing pieces of culture or, you know, art that have been written for it. And um, those, if I'm honest, are what really interests me, the the great deep art that's been written yes. written for this kaleidoscopic, bizarre, mechanical, frustrating, wonderful instrument. Yes, wonderful way of putting it. Um, <laughs> and uh, really the, the organ is uh, something that is usually found in a church. Uh, so there are, there are, I suppose, suggestions of the atmosphere of the church and that tradition. But do you think, if you're going to play, say, some Messiaen, for example, mm. that you would look for a particular place that maybe has a, uh, a different set of associations? Or are you very happy to...? Yes, that's an interesting question, isn't it? I actually don't play a great deal of Messiaen, but I think when I do, of course it suits a kind of spiritual place and it's the stones of a church do resonate with the music I think and the let's just be put it simply the atmosphere of one sitting there the audience sitting there surrounded by this colorful but deeply religious music I think that probably does sit better in a in a church surroundings but then you know some of the music I'm going to play in Hartford the the bird pavan mm. I mean it's not churchy at all but it works on the organ it's a, it's a little dance so 
all bases are covered really with organ yes, music. Yes, well I'm sure we're very much looking forward to, to hearing that. I certainly am uh, next Saturday. So uh, Me too. very good to, to talk to you William. You too. See you soon.